life is absolutely insane. And sometimes it feels like I'm getting pulled in four directions. And each one of those is radically different. The Reptarium is always busy with Mike and Connie constantly cleaning. Yeah. Always. And us always doing a lot of training and of course feeding things. Or what's up, Hiccup? It's exciting that we get to feed stuff and train stuff. It's a beast of its own, you know. There's no doubt that the Reptarium has always got something going on, which I absolutely love. Here you go, Hiccup. Another one for you, buddy. They're like little raptors. I mean, what an absolutely amazing animal. This is what they call a snow blind albino water monitor. Chicken strip, take a look at this. Oh, that's the first time I've ever fed chicken strip off of tongs. He normally hates to get fed off tongs. Very secret. You can see how defensive he is right now. Kale is about to whip and stuff like that, but he was able to take something off tongs the very first time that I've done it. Mike's been working with him over the last month or so to take it this way. It's cool. That may not seem like a big deal to you, but we've been working with chicken strip for three years now. And for me to be able to feed him that way for the first time is an absolutely monumental task. And you have to remember that animals are kind of animals. Believe it or not, I was in a bad mood the other day and actually came out and was actually like trying to bite on me. I don't know what was going on. He was just acting so different than normal. Definitely get back to his normal self. Hey Brillo, what's going on buddy? It's okay bud. And Brillo is his back to his loving self. Animals have attitudes at times too, right? And certainly it was just really weird. I'd never taken Brillo out where he was upset before and for whatever reason he really got upset at me. So this is another thing that we have to do all the time is continue to train our animals so that they're really friendly and want to come out and play. So I'm glad that my buddy Brillo is back to normal. When you fed him like this, he goes, oh, he, he loves the scratches. He loves it. That is, Brillo is freaking amazing. What a cool animal right there. Ivy, what's going on again? We spend so much time with these animals. It's so important to continue to interact. And one of the things is, of course, we're open to the public. As a matter of fact, we're open to the public tonight. And typically, we're just open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But guess what? Here in just a few weeks, we are actually going to start opening here at the Reptarium Wednesday through Sunday. So five days a week. So now, if you want to come visit us during the week, you can't do it during the weekend. You can actually see us on Wednesday and Thursday night as well. Definitely put a link to Reptarium com. You can get your tickets here and come see us anytime. The truth is, is we're always sold out on the weekend. So a lot of times people don't get an opportunity to come because there's no tickets available. So now they're going to be available Wednesday and Thursday. It's going to be amazing. And that's kind of gearing ourselves up. So when we move across the street, we're going to be open seven days a week here. Hey, we'll start to learn how to run five days a week here at the Reptarium before we go seven days a week across the street. Speaking of across the street, we have to actually head to FedEx so we can print out the newest blueprints for the building. The building. Now let's head back and show you what it actually looks like. And it's cool that we have the blueprints. Now the blueprints aren't exactly easy to explain and I realize it's just an empty building, but let me walk you through really quick what this place is gonna be like. This is gonna be the entrance right here when you come through the door and then this is gonna be the gift shop slash counter. So right here, you have a counter, gift shop is on this side and you're gonna pay, you know, check in, whatever the case is. You're gonna walk this way. There's gonna be a big turtle pond right here. Big turtle pond that actually goes around the corner right here. There's gonna be a wall right along this pole line and right over here, giant tank for Bowser. Bowser's tank here. So when you walk in, you can look to your right Bowser, you're gonna see a turtle tank. Ivy's enclosure is gonna be right here, right in the center. Now, if listen, you're not interested in reptiles because this is gonna be all reptiles here. You can actually go right through here and you could go into the fish room, which is our first fish room. If you don't want to, you can come in here and there's gonna be literally ivy and salt and pepper and just reptile cages on this side, this side, in the middle of the kind of snake around and stuff like that. It's gonna go all the way to the back here. So just tons of reptiles. As a matter of fact, it looks like not only are we gonna be able to fit all the reptiles from the reptile, we're gonna be able to add a little bit more. Now, on the very back here, there will be a wall. The whole area here is actually gonna be for the tortoises. So a giant tortoise area for Matilda. I want to have like a water feature in there so she can actually get in the water and climbing areas because it's important for big tortoises to not just be on a flat ground. This whole area is going to be for tortoises. It's going to be amazing. Another doorway here. So if you didn't want to bail over there, come through this door. To your left, you're going to have a giant koi pond that's going to be super cool. Fresh water tanks on this side. Fresh water tanks in the middle. This whole area is going to be fresh water, but then right here, you're going to have a sloth room. Then you're going to have a tamadua. <laughs> Duo room right here, which of course are the miniature anteaters. Then we're gonna have another mammal area here. And then Brillo, who we had saw earlier, is gonna have a giant room. This is like the size of the slot room. It's gonna be just for him right here. As all these tanks right here are gonna be fresh water on the back of the gift shop wall, there's gonna be a giant 25 foot predator fish tank. It's gonna be like 7,500 to 10,000 gallons of predator fish, arapaima, arowana, red tail cats. I mean, all kinds of cool stuff that you can actually feed. And then the only way through is actually right here after you get it, there's gonna 
going to be a big room here that you walk through and it's going to have three giant glowfish tanks. that are cylinders. So you have to walk through that dark room. Glowfish going to be absolutely amazing. You're going to walk through and then the rest of this place is going to be salt water or marine fish. Right here, there's going to be what they call a bridge tank, which is a big cylinder, a big cylinder with a cylinder across the top that you can actually walk you know, through. On this side, you're going to see a bunch of really cool tanks. Over to the right here, we're going to have our birthday party room. A giant birthday party room can fit almost 100 people in it. But on this side of the thing, it's going to be the stingray tank. Right here, a giant stingray tank. 25 foot across, almost 20 foot long, five foot deep that you can actually get in and snorkel with it. Over here, we're going to have our bullnose tanks that are over here are going to be back to back. 40 foot of fish tank right here. We're going to have giant cylinders over here. We're going to have a reef tank against that wall. We're going to have a giant shark tank right over here. 25 foot cylinder shark tank that is five foot deep. It's going to be on like a four foot pedestal, mm -hmm. nine foot high. You're going to have black tip reef sharks. You're going to have bonded head sharks. You're going to have all kinds of cool stuff. And then, of course, we're going to have tons of other fish and stuff. Then you'll walk out of that area into the actual gift shop right here. This is going to be the gift shop here, walking back through. Cool kind of games and stuff like that. You got claw games. You're going to have the hurricane machine. I'm trying to work on the kind of sifting thing that I talked about across the street with the dig site. Trying to put one of those in here somewhere. And then ultimately, you'll be back to the countertop and out the door. That gives you the idea, and that's what these prints show. And I tell you what, it may not seem like much, but this is actually how far the building is going to come out right here. This is all the cement work that we have to do for footing, so you kind of get the idea. Remember when I told you that this wall is going to get bumped out? Well, this area is all already dug out for it. This is where it's going to be cement. This is going to be part of the building here. This will be really the gift shop here. Not where I talked about there, so it may not seem like a lot of work is getting done, but to be honest with you, we're making a lot of progress. Ooh. Oh. Nippy out here. I know I said there's basically four things that are pulling me in different directions this year, but in reality, there's really five, and that is something I'm so excited about. Of course, that's Animal Con USA that's happening September 15th through the 17th down in Orlando. I'm gonna put a link in the description, animalconusa.com. Buy your tickets now. I mean, last year was awesome. It was the proof of concept if it worked, and it worked really well, and almost everybody that I've talked to said that they're coming back, and then we're gonna have a lot more people. Last year, we had 100 influencers. This year, we hope to have 200 influencers. We only had a handful of boosts last year. We're going to have like 200 booths this We're year. We're going to have tons of stuff to do. You can meet your favorite influencer. You can go to talk. We're going to have a reptile scape off. We're going to have an aqua scape off. We're going to have live podcasting going on. It's going to be much more of a festival-like atmosphere. It'll be absolutely amazing. This time is going to definitely be three times the size of before. You don't want to miss this one. Trust me. Animal Con USA, September 15th through the 17th, Orlando. It's going to be ridiculous. A lot of work to do, but trust me, it's going to be worth it. Over here at the aquarium house, which of course is another huge part of my days, and it's completely different than everything else I do, right? I have to come here every day, make sure that the fish get fed, do all my chores. So let's go ahead and feed the fish. How cool is that to see all these fish just devouring the food, swimming around and all oh, amazing. This is exactly what I envisioned when I got this house and thought this tank would look as cool as it does. Okay, that's done with feeding the cichlid, so uh, let's go downstairs and feed the koi. Check these guys out, they already know what's coming. 10 or 12 fish in this entire 5,000 gallon pond. We'll eventually have about 20, 25 maximum. Usually it's about one koi per 25 gallons, meaning that we could have about 25 koi in here eventually. And these guys are small, so we're gonna get some bigger ones in here too. I told you, even just with the handful that we have in here, I love coming here every day and feeding these guys. Chores, chores, chores. Always doing something. Make sure everything looks good. We have to fill the water basin up every maybe seven to 10 days, something like that. Just part of the things we have to do. Looking good for right now. As a matter of fact, we actually had our first people stay here last night. And that's right. Just really fixing up all the stuff, getting it all clean and ready for tonight's guest here. You know, I'll be honest with you, I was a bit nervous the first people to stay in the house. It went fine, it's really good, but we actually now are starting to book it pretty consistently. So we have a lot of people staying over the next two or three weeks. So we gotta make sure it always stays super clean. All the bedding is done, all the stuff gets cleaned out. Everything is ready to go. So uh, it's a chore, but I love this place. 
then of course there's BHB Reptiles where it all started right in 1989 that's crazy that I've been doing it since 1989 but it's a pretty well oiled machine here of course the colubrids are in brumation this year boas and pythons are hardcore breed and of course every year there's something cool to be excited about something that we've never produced before whether it be a morph a ball python hopefully this year we're going to be producing some albino rainbow boas for the very first time for us of course this is a T negative albino here of course, this is the T positive albino rainbow boa and like I mentioned oh it got me right in the boo boo <laughs> you little monkey you the thing is is that there's so many mutations that are so exciting to be producing whether it's ball pythons or even stuff like savu pythons the albridge pythons and so many things every year it's exciting to be involved with these breeding projects and this little monkey here he got a little bit of a chomp there that's completely fine i hope that he produces some babies this year how cool is that gonna be so here in the next couple months we'll start getting eggs which is gonna be amazing and then when it comes to live bears like rainbow boas and boa constrictors typically like midsummer so bhb is always a big part of what we do here we're always trying to evolve the way we do things at BHB, but definitely has been around for a long time and uh, I still love producing snakes. So yeah, things get pretty crazy here, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, boobie! boobie.